Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter. It's Friday the 30th of September, the last day of September. I can't believe it. The time has just flown by. It's crazy at the moment and um, it's just about, well, it's just after half 11 in the morning as I'm recording this. So it's nearly afternoon. I slept until 10 o'clock this morning. Um, I was awake in the middle of the night, mind, and it's raining and it's blowy and so it's the perfect day to stay inside and be creative. Not that every day isn't the perfect day for me to do that. So thank you for joining me. Thank you so much if you've subscribed to my channel. I appreciate you so much. And if you've given thumbs up for my videos, that's a huge appreciation from me as well and gratitude. If you're new or you haven't subscribed yet and you keep returning, please consider doing so. It's free doesn't cost you anything and thank you for all the lovely comments and suggestions and so on as well. Today I'm very fuzzy headed I've had two very big mugs of tea and I'm still not with it but I've got here in front of me this is a piece of Fabriano toned paper it's sand is the colour it's called and um, this is four and a half inches by four and a half inches so I'm going to draw some stuff with you and one of the things I've been looking at um, in the last day or so is work by William Morris who interests me not just for his art but for other things as well but that's a different story entirely and I just thought it could be quite nice to do some of his kinds of using some of his motifs to build up a beautiful design here but in an Angela kind of way and of course they're not going to be exact copies because we're talking me here. I don't know why I'm turning this round because I'm going to start somewhere. Um, I have already put a pencil border in. Um, I like to draw this with a ruler so I get it rough. Yeah well you know precise. It's one of those days where precision is, is required and I think I'm going to start actually with my pencil. Pop my fountain pen away and I'm going to draw in here some branches for flowers perhaps to I'm not happy with those <clears throat> and uh, yeah I haven't planned this um, but then do I ever plan anything so I think it could be quite nice to have some that perhaps start towards the centre-ish but go off and also the branch So there are lots of ways of getting these to branch to fill the space in and I think that's my basic starting place hopefully you can see that if I put the light on oh I have now and I think that's just not improved things very much but um, we'll see so I'm going to want to put some flowers at the top of these and the ones I think I'm going to do I'm going to start with the teardrop shape in the middle, like this. Then I'm going to go a little bit away from this, where the stem's going to be, and I'm going to draw another petal as if it's going to form a teardrop. Same on the other side. They don't have to be identical because nature is not identical. And then I'm going to draw the tops of some flowers there, just like that. I'm actually going to do all the flowers first. I think I might mix and match some. So I think on this branch I'll have them all pretty much the same. I think I'll have them all as flower buds. William Morris was very, uh, I love his art, it's beautiful. And I've, although I've looked at it, I've never really studied it in detail. And of course, British. And he was one of the people who believed that things of function, you should only have things of, that are useful in your house. But they should also be things of beauty. Um... And he was very influenced by 
medieval manuscripts. But I also love the way that he works with quite simple colours as well. In terms of these petals in the original, these petals here, are actually filled with just two colours, a light colour and a darker one, often of the same kind of colour. And it's just, it's just beautiful. And I'm just thinking, OK, let's get to grips with this, because you know I struggle with colour a lot. So don't be surprised if you are not looking at, you know, lots of different things. And I think here on some of these, I'm going to pop. Well, I'm going to put some buds on here that will look as if they're from a different plant. But who says we can't put buds from different plants on? So I'm going to create my little buds like this. I'll do some more. I'll do another one because I didn't talk your way through it. So a U shape. On the top, we're going to put three little arches and then we're going to do two just there. And I'll put one over here. Notice I'm not drawing the stems in yet. Because I, I want to put some leaves in first. That's why I've put the stems in pencil because I want leaves that start on one side of the stem and curve around and then the stems will fall in naturally. So this isn't, isn't really Zentangle, but it is in some ways. We'll see what happens because I may put patterns into the, the petals and so on. But the leaves, I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw a curve round and have it curve that way. Then for the top side of the leaf, I'm actually going to start here and allow it to come down like that. And the top, I'm going to curve back in that way. So I've created a leaf that curls around. And I am going to add lines to create a sense, a more, a bigger sense of volume. Now on this leaf, this petal here, I haven't got as much space for a leaf. Well, I do have if I go up here. So there I've put, curved it round and then I've joined the end there, almost like we're making a, a crescent moon shape. And then from the back here, that's where I'm going to come around and down. So it's another way of making the same kind of leaf. There are lots of ways of doing this. And um, I'm going to pop some leaves on when I, and with these I want them to hook around the stem a bit. So I'm going to draw them back and they are going to have a, a kick around like that in some way. So the stem will actually go through it. I think I've actually done a double one here, which is ridiculous, but it'll work out. Here, so I'm going to start this side of the stem I'm going to go up and over and round, come back there, then I can join this around and we can come back and join it to the stem eventually. So let's put some stems in because I, I can then see what space I've got and I can use all different ways of adding leaves. So here I'm going to add my stem down to here. And this one's going to go behind. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of an awkward join, but it'll be fine. Here we've got this one coming back around, so I'm going to have to be... Well, it doesn't matter too much here because it's going to loop around. So my stem's going to go underneath this section up here and connect it to the... Ooh, made that one a bit thicker. It'll be fine. Really, I'm not awake enough for this. <laughs> OK, so let's bring the stem down here. This one here, but I do want it to create a join here. So this one will go under the leaf here. And there's my stem there. And up there. These little buds 
I've just realised I should have left little, little gaps for them, but I think I'm just going to join them with a simple single line, perhaps. I think that might work for them. So I'm just putting a little bobble on the bottom and just connecting them that way. And then I can see where I might need to add some extra little leaves. I think there's one that could fit in here. So I can do the same kind of idea and have a leaf like that. And perhaps here we could just have a small leaf at that in the crook of where that yeah, and that actually looks okay. There's plenty of space around and about, so there are things I can do with this. And I want to do some things like corner rounding and thickness of line. Now then, I just need to check that my ink has dried, because I'm using fountain pen ink. And I am going to just take this a little bit out of here and just put like a heel on the bottom. So I've bent this line out a little bit, this one out a little bit and put a, a curved line here this way and uh, just do something like that there. So I've just added more ink. Okay, that looks lovely as it is and I'm tempted not to add any more in here but I think I will. And I think that we will just do the same. Should we do the same kind of flower? I think so. So I think it will give a coherent feel. Perhaps I can have a flower open over here. I wonder what these flowers look like when they open. So I'm going to make that happen. So I'm going to take the shape of one of these leaves and I may just adjust the the shape and position of my flowers. These are going to dip out, so. That's one of these petals. It's a smaller one, but it'll work. And then I'm going to draw in here. I want to get a couple of petals going this way and perhaps another one that goes out like so. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fit an oval in that comes back like this. It doesn't look exactly right at the moment, but it will do once we start to add more petals in and it will be just fine. So I'm making the petals look like they're bending over or folding over in some areas, in others, like they're sticking up. So just like they would do in a, an open flower. There's no need to be exactly precise with these. And in the centre here, what I'm going to do with this centre, apart from add some weight to the bottom and left, just to thicken it, I'm actually going to create that illusion of domeness with curved lines. Like that. So that's starting to produce that illusion, but I'll strengthen it by adding lines going in the opposite direction. Oh, you know, at 90 degrees to it, not the opposite direction. And that creates a lovely kind of pattern there. Again, I'm going to come back and add some lines into this and thicken lines and so on. Like here. I do want to add some line weight to the edges. I love the stylized nature of... William Morris and others work and I think it appears in my work and every now and again it's lovely to go back and look at other people's work you know our other artists much loved much you know um, have inspired so many others and to see that yeah actually <laughs> it's okay to stylize things I do like that 
and I think I'll pop some different leaves on this one. So I'm starting with the stem, I'm going up and I'm creating a little rounded bit. A pointed bit, rounded and down, and then we'll have the top of the leaf. So I'm going to do this on the other side now. And I'm going to have an extra one on the other side, but that's fine. I can live with that. And I will put just a simple line in for the centre of the leaf. So I'll do that again. Do a little leaf here. Just perhaps three of them. So I start with the stem, bend downwards up to a point back on itself, around. Oh, we're going to do a f one with five. Like so, they don't have to be equal or perfect. They work no matter what. So we've got some leaves going on here. Okay, and I think I might actually add something a little bit different. What was it? It was them. So I'm going to draw this shape, which is quite a wide triangle without the bottom or a V with the rounded bottom. And then I'm going to draw Two lines leaving a gap at the bottom, and then a third one coming out like this. And I think that would be quite nice. Now I could fill these with beads, or I could fill them with single petals. I said we're mixing and matching things here, so let's just pop some petals on or in there. And there's the stem going back to the main stem of the plant. And I think I may just... Draw some here. Here I've put a little dip in the bottom, which is where the stem would sit. A bit easier, perhaps. So I'm going to draw those in. Pop the central one in. And add curves for the petals. Nice and simple. Start to draw this in. And I'll add the leaves on separately. I think I might do that actually up here is where I'm going to draw the stem into this. And perhaps just connect the leaves that way because it will work perfectly no matter what. This is the beauty of doing work like this is that nobody knows what your original intention was. As long as you're consistent in what you do, that's your design. So you can change and adapt things as you go, which I do all the time, to be honest. So let's have a look here. So there's one that just has three little lobes on it and perhaps another one up here, a teeny tiny one which would work. And perhaps another one here. Like so. And then I need to do something over here and I think it's going to be... Um, I think I'll finish this stem. I'm not doing a lot of weaving in and out, you know, in and out here of stems. It's possible. I mean, I, I'm going to do one here actually. So let me pop my stem in. I'm going to have one that comes up here that I'm going to put a flower on the end of, but it's going underneath. And I think the flower up here, or the what I'm going to pop up here is going to be a variation on the on the theme of this shape. I really do like this shape. And I think here is where I'm going to fill these with almost like little seeds. Just so sweet. I 
And I'm even going to go back at the top and I'd make them look like they're piled up in the teeny tiny little ones there. And my stem is a bit off kilter with that, but I'm fine with that. And then I'm just going to add some, just some simple leaf shapes, which are drawn with an S and back. And that works quite nicely. Something just nice there, nice and simple. And there's the stem again. And then here, again, I'm going to have a very simple kind of stem going on. Remember to widen it at the bottom first. And uh, I think I'll do another one of those little buds we did on the other side, like so. And then perhaps with some leaves that are curling over themselves like this. So I'll draw one very similar again. So it's down, back to a point, and then in this case, I'm starting from underneath that folded over bit. And I'm going to add almost like a leaf there and perhaps so a circle on the top and a little line through the middle so it's almost like a little bird so a little one line with a bump out that way bump out that way so it's a place to support the bird strictly speaking sepals and we can pop that in there actually looks quite cute I like that and is there anywhere else here I can put any more in? I, I could, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave as it is for now. And I'll think about things I can put in the background maybe. But what I want to do more than anything is to spend a little bit of time, like I did with this flower up here, and start to add some line weights and some line rounding. Now, normally I do this as I work, but today, I'm just going to go around these. This is where you can make little changes to shapes almost with the ink as you add it. I'm being consistent in the way I add the weighting, the extra ink to these lines. Left and bottom is the way I do it. And same with my stem here. And even with the, these leaves, the left and the bottom. Left, bottom of the sections. And as soon as you start to do this, it starts to put some lovely dimension into it. This bit is underneath here. So sometimes you have to stop and think about, although this is on the left, it's actually more like on the top. So this is the bottom and that makes more sense to make it thicker. Whereas here, this is going more to the left. It's less of the top. I don't know if that makes any sense. But it's kind of how you have to work things out in your head for things like this. So that's definitely the left. That's the left. That's the left. And that little bit there is towards the bottom. Just want to add some little bits of rounding as well where petals and things meet just makes that little join, that little connection, I like it. It helps to define shapes and so on. So where the, the leaves meet the stem, we can actually add some weighting as well. Don't need to do it on that one. So here, 
left bottom to the left. That's more like it's pointing upwards to the top, so I'm going to leave that where it is. Over here, this is the bottom left, bottom and left, a little bit there. This is the bottom and the left. Oh gosh, that's a really thick, heavy line. So left, left, and a little bit in there. And where it joins, we'll add that little bit of extra weighting. Left, bottom, a little bit of bottom there, a bit of weighting in the, the corners. And also where the stems join, like here, we'll add some weighting as well. Okay, and you can see the difference that makes compared to the other side already. But I haven't finished adding details, by the way. Okay, with this one, here's the left and bottom. And this does connect here. And this one's underneath, so I want to add some weight there. Adding shadow and some contour lines in a moment will really help. Contour lines are the lines that I draw the fine lines that help to give that a suggestion that this isn't flat, it has got volume on it. You know, it is volume, there is more to it than what you think. So, there we go left and bottom on these not forgetting that little bit of darkness just that extra bit of ink in between those petals there and I'm going to flare that out at the end same with this one so left and to the bottom I'm having much like drawing today then I am I'm very hard on myself so Left, underneath there, there. Don't forget the little bobbly bits. This one is left and bottom, so that's right the way along there. Adding some rounding to the corners of the stems. Again, although this is on the left, this is on the left, but you get so far up and it starts to turn around to be the top edge. So we want to look for where this is the, this remains the bottom as it were. There, and then this returns back to the left along here. Okay, these leaves, again, it's, it's using a kind of idea. Here is the left. I am going to add a bit of extra weight to where they overlap and the bottom there. So around here we've got underneath, this becomes the right hand side and then this becomes the bottom again. So here is the left and then it starts to turn around and becomes the top. And here is where this is the left still. Okay, that one I need to tidy up a little bit. I'm going to add some flaring out weight at the bottom of the stem where it joins the flower here. And the petals to the left and bottom on them all. And I didn't do it up here, but I'm going to go back and do it. I'm just adding that little bit of ink where these petals seem to join and meet. Almost like we're creating stained glass in some way. The fact this paper has curled up on me a bit isn't helping my ability to draw straight. They all draw neatly. So again, this is the bottom. So we'll thicken that one. Here we've got bottom round to there, left around until it starts to become the top, then underneath here, and I will carry that line on, and then here, and we've got our leaf in. This little bud, I'm just going to Add the shadows in, or the thicker lines where there would be shadow. And then here it's going to be to the left again, and bottom, left, 
bottom, bottom around. And then it's just thinking about how we can fit that one in. And I actually think that, is that everything done? I think it is. I think it is. This area here does look a bit empty. And so I think what I might do here is pop another one of these leaves in. But let's make it a bit of an extravagant one. with plenty of <laughs> curves and swirls in it. You can ask me how I did that now, aren't you? <laughs> can you show us how you did that? I can hear you thinking it as you're watching. Of course I can, and I will. So around to the left, what is the bottom and the left and the left there? Okay, you get a piece of paper I'm sure I've got one here. I have. Okay, so that leaf I drew, if I turn it this way, I drew the first line as quite an extravagant kind of S shape with a spiral on the end. So then I went back and created one section there. So that was underneath the line I drew. The next one is on the other side of the line I drew. Then I go back inside here and choose a point that the line will draw from and join. And then I alternate back to here and it gives that feeling of a leaf sort of curling around. Now I do need to find a pen than my fountain pen a moment. And I'm going to get a um, O1 out, hopefully. Yes, I have an O1. And for this one, to help to bring that I idea of folding over, we need to have a look at where these leaves go under one another and where the underneaths are. So I've automatically got this sense of this going under and over. But we can also add contour lines down the centres of these curves as well. Which helps to bring some movement and shadow in. So I'm going to use the same kind of ideas on the leaves here. Even these little ones that... I'm going to add some lines at the base of them just to bring some shadow out. But these ones, again, I'm going to add shadow where they overlap, like so, and then contour lines towards the middle. Same here towards the middle, where they overlap. This one, contour line in the middle, and then from where they overlap, here, it overlaps there, they overlap there, and then they overlap here. And then in between is where I'm going to put those contour lines just to help to bring the direction of the leaf out. Again here, it's going to be contour lines under there, under here. But then with these end bits, I'm going to pop just some shadow in the tips. So I'll do all the le all of these leaves very quickly. So if they're not folding over, I'm just going to add some shadow lines, as it were, at the base. This one is very untidy, so I'm going to just tidy that up. Add some shadow lines there. And then where I've got a lot of space where I can fit a number of them in, that's what I'm going to do with that one. OK, these, are, these leaves... How can I add shadow to them? I don't think I'm going to. I think what I will do, though, is I am going to come back and I'm just going to thicken this out to make it a bit more bulbous towards the end. Perhaps that'll work nicely. Oh, I didn't do 
the sides of these, this one, did I? That's the only one I've got like that. Okay, petals next. And I'm going to add contour lines at the base of the petals, just like that. And so I'm going to have to adjust how I add them, depending on how the petals are, are sat next to each other. And I'm going to have to think about how these lines will change direction as we go from one side of the petal to the other. And here I've got quite a bit of overlapping, so I'm going to add some shadowy lines there. This one, just add some lines like that. And as I f I'm flicking my pen so the, the line becomes fainter automatically, I like to do that by pulling my pen towards me. So I start with the greatest pressure at the start of my stroke and the least pressure as I come to the end. Some people prefer to do it the other direction. Experiment and find out which way is best for you. So that's automatically added some volume dimension to that. To this one, I'm just going to add some contour lines at the bottom. The same here. And tiny ones in the top. With these little buds, I'm looking at the bottom again and I'm just going to add some lines there. We could add them at the top. This is interesting because I've got this filled with all these dots, so I'm not even going to add anything. I'm just looking at what is the best approach to be had. So that works there. This one, same as the other, so we'll have some contour lines at the bottom and fine ones at the top. You notice I've just contradicted myself. I do prefer to flick the pen towards me. But I'm just varying things a little here. So I'll do it that way. I just think I get fainter lines and a, f a lighter fade off as well. But there's really, there's not much difference between them. So this one, I'm going to do the same. This would be lovely to do with a ballpoint pen actually because ballpoint pens, um, a black ballpoint pen is often quite greyish when it's, well, say it's greyish when it's light, lightly applied. And of course they are water resistant as well. Though I wouldn't use them with alcohol markers because they, the alcohol dissolves the oil that's in the ink and it can gum up your pen. Ask me how I know that, because I've done it. So I'd use old alcohol markers or ones I'm not fond of. <laughs> I want an excuse to get rid of them or to use them up. And Okay. The one other thing I want to do is I want to add some... On this one I need to add some weight there. But I want to add shadow where on the stems where the big flowers are connected. Or where I've got a distinct stem like that. So this is my drawing as it is. I am going to draw my border in because I do like a border, as you know. Now this is going to be hand drawn, even though I'm following the pencil lines I put in originally. I am still going to deliberately wobble my pen a little bit so that it's a, cons a consistent wobble across the whole of the design, if that makes any sense. And I do make an accidental wobble like there. That wobbly line wasn't deliberate. Um, it just happened. Then they all fit in and it doesn't look like, oh my gosh, I was trying to draw everything completely straight and it didn't work out. Oh, I like that. I like the way I've got this, this background panel and I like the way everything's spilling out of it. I do like that. Okay, so shading, 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 shading. I was really naughty. I bought a set of um, pit pastel pencils 
And for this, I am going to go with browns. So I have got in here, I've got a lovely yellowish ochre colour. I have got a mid-tone, I've got a lovely reddish, a deepish reddish brown. And I've got a tone that's in between the two, this one. And I'm also going to use some greens. And I've got lovely, I've got olive, really dark olive, but I've got some lovely sort of like gray green colors as well, I think. I might use the olive. There we go, I've got those. And I found tortillons, so I'm blending stumps and so on. So I've got a blending stump here, which oddly has got orangey yellow and a greeny end. So let's see how this is going to work. I'm keeping this monochrome here. Before I do this though, I do want to erase any annoying pencil lines or as many pencil lines as I can, because I won't be able to do that once I've added, oops, the um, pastel pencils. So if I want to do this, now is the time. I'm just going to brush that off in my towards my bin. And let's see if we can uh, just right. Okay, so I'm going to start with the green the, the leaves. I'm going to put the green pastel where there is shadow and where the leaves curl over, and then. I'm just going to gently blend it out, keeping the colour in the space, but keeping the colour darkest in the, in the bases. Now in the middle, I could use a lighter green, but I think I may come in with a white pencil, or the white charcoal later on, we'll see. So I'm going to add green. I'm going to do all the pastel in one go. This paper actually grabs onto it, holds it really well. And uh, it's rather lovely. It's got quite a texture to it, but it doesn't seem to bother my pens too much. Although I do think that my fountain pen feathers on this quite a bit. So I'm looking for all my leaves to begin with. I'll come back and do the stems in a moment. So where I've put the pencil lines is where I'm going to put the pastel down and um, blend it out afterwards. With these ones, I think I'm going to make these leaves quite dark at the base. I'm avoiding putting the pastel on top of my pen, but perhaps put some of the colour up along that central line or on either side of it so I've got enough there to spread out. That'll be fine. These ones are definitely going to be green, these little bits, so I'm going to add this at the base. So where's the other one like that? It's there. And I think that's everything except for the stems. So let me deal with these first. So I'm just gently helping the pastel to go into the paper just to give a different colour. To the background. And you can see how that's working, hopefully. And I am turning my drawing around so I can see what I'm doing. And again, there's enough left on this paper stump or tortillon if you prefer to call them that, that strictly speaking it's a paper stump that if I haven't put enough pastel down then I've got enough here to just take it from the paper stump and blend it out. If it spills over, it spills over. It is what it is the nature of this so if I if it ends up outside the lines a little bit it ends up outside the lines a little bit this is just so lovely to do oh 
missed a bit there. And of course, if, that, if it's not enough contrast, I can always go back and add more. And that's the beauty of working with things like this. So I've got most of my green in. I am going to do the stems. And these little bits here will need some colour. And I'm going to add extra colour where the stems overlap and also towards the bottom of them, I think. So where we've got overlapping going on, I'm going to add plenty of the pastel, the chalk pastel. Because things would be in shadow there and perhaps the branching of the stems. And where I've got distinct stems as well. The little bobbly bits at the bottom of these flowers would be good as well. I think that's everything. The base there. I'm going to add a bit extra here because it does look a bit insipid. That'll be fine. Now the background, I would like to change the background of this, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I might use, try using a lighter colour chalk pastel to add some colour, particularly around the edges, or perhaps a lighter one to add some highlights. I don't know yet. See there, I missed that one with chalk and there was enough chalk on this paper stump to add colour there. Though this doesn't spread, you know, graphite and the chalk pastel don't spread as easily on this paper because of all its tooth, all of its texture. So that's added some colour or some shading to those. It's very subtle, but it's very lovely. Okay. For some of these, like this here, I'm going to add this lovely light yellow at the top and blend that down. Hopefully it is going to dull the pen lines, which is not a good idea to get things outside the lines. But I'm going to add the colour away from the shadow lines and then I can just stroke it down and leave the shadow down there. So it's just adding that subtle hint of colour over the pen lines. So that's my advice for using chalk pastels. Anything that's opaque is think about avoiding covering your pen lines or accept that they are going to be muted. And I think as long as I remain inside the lines, you know, the main dark lines I think I'll be okay this one I haven't I've managed to get some over there but it'll be fine so I'm nearly done with this colour nearly I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these but I'm keeping my colour palette simple here because I don't want too much variation you know um, so that inspiration from William Morris is quite simple colour palettes work really well. But I can change what colours I use within my palette on different things. So for this one I'm going to use this orangey brownie colour. So I've got some of this colour on there. What I could do then is just add some of that colour to the base if it's going to show up. I don't think it's going to that one out the way. I'm actually really glad I bought these, these pastel pencils. I was humming and hawing about the cost, giving the rising cost of everything. But I've been humming and hawing about it as I've been drawing a lot lately. And I just thought, do you know what? I think I just need to do this <laughs> because um, as much as I love ink, ink tents and so on, there are times where I want to add that extra bit of colour and the paper doesn't react well to water-based media or whatever else is happening and so on. But these are really lovely. They're also 
um, they weren't that expensive as far as good quality pastels go. And I'm really pleased with them. And I know I can get them open stock. So even though I bought a set of 36, there's a lot more colours than that in the range. I know that I've most probably got the colours I want here, plus a couple of extra ones just for fun. But it's those earthy colours that I was looking for. But I didn't know which ones I wanted. And when you've got open stock, you're trying to decide on colours and so on, I get easily overwhelmed. So I now have a, a, a guide to which, which ones I've got in this set. So as they get used up, I can replace them easily. I don't have to buy a whole set, which is one of the problems with um, you know, budget brands, is that you often can't buy single colours or replace colours. Right, this central one in the middle, I am going to use the darkest colour for. And I am going to put a lot of colour around the outside edges and where there's going to be shadows where the petals are. And perhaps, I shouldn't have done this now perhaps, but we will use it as it is. I'm just going to bring, blend that, keeping most of the colour or a lot of the darkness on the edges and where the shadows are. But I just wanted to bring some colour to the top and that's worked quite nicely. I think it has anyway. And while I've got that colour and I'm using it, I am going to add it to these little the seeds in here. And I'm just going to do that. And yeah, I've gone over the my ink, so I may have to bring that back out again later on, but I may not. So with these ones, these are part of these flowers. They might have different leaves, but, you know, we can live with that, can't we? This is more about exploring leaves and shapes than anything else, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. And having a look at different things that you can draw, places where you can get inspiration from, and an excuse for me to try these pastels out. Do you know I'm not a fan of graphite? But I, my mind is working on other ways to use these because these will go over the top of other media. And I think they'll work on the top of metallic paints so you can bring some interest that way. They're not water soluble, so in theory, when you put them down, even if you put a wash of colour over, they should remain where they are. But I'm not entirely sure about that, so that's something I'll need to experiment with. But as you can get beautiful gradients with just one colour, which is my whole aim here, then this works really nicely. What I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put a little hint of the darker colour on the tips, especially those ones at the back. just to add some sh extra interesting colour. It's not so much about shadow here, it's about colour. And I'm going to do the same here, just those hints of this because they will blend. I have to say I much prefer pastel pencils to chalk pastel um, blocks, the soft ones that are really, really soft because they just go everywhere. Though I have done some, I've got a picture downstairs that I did of um, part of a sculpture of um, that's in um, the, the cathedral in Santiago, Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. And I just took a section of it and it's got um, there's a book there or a ribbon going across the sculpture with the word Pax on, peace. And that hangs downstairs in my back room because I'm not going to hang it in daylight or, you know, somewhere where there's a lot of bright lights. But I did it all in soft greens and lovely colours like that. And I think I'm just going to add some 
this orange to these other ones here because I really like the way that this darker colour has blended in the tips. Put some on the bottom of these. I've forgotten how much I actually like working with pastels. I think the older ones I had, or the other one, other brands I had, just didn't suit me. These are beautiful though. So I've got all of these here. So how's it looking? Does it look okay? It looks quite washed out in the, in the picture. Let me try and turn that light off. There we are. It's a bit better. Right then, I have got a white chalk pastel. This is the recipe for disaster here because um, I do want to add some little highlights even though I'm very happy with this how it is. But you could see it as I can here. I say I want to add some highlights. I'm going to add some hi highlights in areas where... Right, have I got... This is the big question now is do I have... I have, actually, I have got a new stump here that is very, it's a small one, it's a very fine one. It's not being used. Actually, the end is really soft and lovely. And I'm just going to add little hints of highlights on some of the leaves just to help to bring out that structure in places and suggest the leaves are perhaps a little bit shinier. the stems. That is really bright isn't it in comparison. So we just blend it through. Just that little hint of white it lifts it doesn't it. Just that little hint. Okay, perhaps on the tips of these we could add some. And of course, because the, the paper underneath this is toned, the white will really stand out against it, even when it's blended out. So I'm looking where I can add some highlights. Just thinking about where the light would catch these. Just a little bit there. And I've got to find all the places I've just added chalk to blend it in. I will do. It's not an onerous task to do. It is almost like the icing on the cake, isn't it? little bit there, a little bit there. And I could possibly add little bits in these just to lighten that a little bit. Perhaps to add that bit of lightness where petals would be quite bulbous and would perhaps catch a little bit more of the light than their brethren. Right, okay, this one needs a little bit more blending in. So here, so it's just towards the middle of the petal, not right the way across, and I am looking at where perhaps the high points would be. Strictly speaking, I should be using a, a yellow or a, a warmer colour, a lighter colour, a less bright colour than the white, but these will blend one into another. And yet, this paper stump is becoming not white, but... I'll just add some little bits of white here. I can clean it up, sandpaper does that. And there, I think this is, just seeing if I can flatten it, I 
think that is done. Apart from the background, I'm not quite sure what to do about that because I know if I start adding pastel and things, I'm just going to get confused about it. So I think I'm just going to call this one done. Apart from, I do want to sneak my initials in. Like so. And I guess the easiest way to add interest would be to add colour on the outside border, but I don't think I'm going to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's taken me about an hour to do, just over an hour. So YouTube will love me for uploading another long video. I'm not, but I hope you'll give it a go. And just don't be afraid to stop and rewatch things and go over things. I, I try to explain in words, hopefully my hands out of the way so you can see how the stretches are. Of course, you can always turn the volume off and slow the speed of the video down as well. Um, so thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed my bit of William Morris Arna, William Morris inspired, um, and can take some of these things to use in your own work. I just love them. The florals, nature, it's me. So take care of yourselves, enjoy the rest of your day, and find time to be creative. It's so good for our mental and emotional health, if nothing else. And just drawing for pleasure. That's what this was for me. Just drawing for pleasure. So take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye.